I'd like to take a few moments and teach you a strategy that is very practical, something that you can use in your lives all of the time. It's a strategy called front end estimation. And what it allows you to do is to add numbers or subtract them or multiply them, divide them mentally and get an approximate answer. For example, let's say you're at the grocery store and you're putting items into your shopping cart. Using this strategy, by the time you get to the cashier, you're going to be able to figure out approximately what the total is going to end up being so that you don't go over budget, for instance. There is no one way to use the strategy. I'm going to teach you one of the ways, the, the simplest way to do it. It might not give you the most, the, the most accurate approximation, but it will suffice. It's going to be good enough. Your teacher, if you're at another school, might teach you front end estimation in a slightly different way. But let's take a look at this strategy. It's very simple. The question states to determine the approximate sum of 262 and 315. And we're going to use this system called front end estimation. The word sum we know means plus. So we're going to write our equation down. Front end estimation says you need to take just the first digit, keep it, and turn everything into zeros. Some of you I know might be thinking, well, Mr. Melham, I learned many years ago that, you know, if I want to take this number here and keep it, this here, if it's five or bigger, I've got, I've got to round this one up here. I've got to round. You know what? Some teachers will teach it that way and say, yeah, you got to round. I'm going to keep it very, very simple. I'm going to say, don't round. You can if you want to, but I'm going to say using my strategy of front end estimation, don't round. Just keep it the same. 262 becomes 200. 315, 300. We're just keeping the front number and we're just adding them now. We're going to add them and we get 500. But here's my question to you. Is this estimate, is this estimate higher or lower than the actual value? Think about it. Stop here and think about it. This is very important. If I took 262 and I reduced it and I took 315 and I reduced it, the answer will also be reduced, okay? My approximation is gonna be lower than the real value because these two numbers here are lower than these two numbers. My answer will also be lower than what I would have had had I punched this into a calculator and got the actual amount. So the estimate is lower in this case. Let's move on to question two. Use front end estimation to calculate the approximate difference between these two numbers. And what do we know about difference? Difference means subtract. You have to know that. That's very important. So we're going to subtract. <laughs> Using the strategy. Wait a minute. We have decimals. What does the strategy say if we have decimals? It doesn't matter. You keep the first number and you throw everything, bring it down to zero. Turn them all to zeros. Where'd the decimal go? It doesn't matter. Decimal's right here, but we're not going to even show it. We don't care about the decimal. We're just going to leave the actual number. 6, 0, 0, 0, and then decimal 0, 0. That's just 6,000. Then we take this number. What do you think it turns into? Very good. 4,000 or 6,000 minus 4,000. Now, is that answer lower or higher than the actual amount because this is not the exact answer. This is an estimate because we changed both values. But is this higher or lower? Think back to what I said last time. If we took this number and reduced it and we took this number and reduced it, then the answer will also be reduced. So this here, this estimate is lower than what you would have actually um, received if you punched this into a calculator. It is lower. How about using front end estimation to calculate the approximate product of these two numbers? And what do we know about product? Product is the key word. Product means multiply, means times. So we'll take those numbers and we have to multiply them. So we'll take the first number, keep the one, turn all these to zeros. You've got a thousand decimal zero zero, which is a thousand. We're going to take 42.43 and we're going to turn it into just 40. 40.00 is just 40. Now, don't get too scared about this here. This is very simple. 
Here's a trick you can use to multiply numbers that have a bunch of zeros after them. You take the digit in the front, you multiply it, you get four. Four times one is four. However many zeros come after these numbers, everything you see in red gets added on to that answer. So you're going to put four with one, two, three, four zeros. That's 40,000. Is the estimate 40,000 higher or lower than the actual value? Remember, we lowered this number. We lowered the second number. That means we've lowered the answer as well. The real answer, if you would have multiplied these, is going to be much higher than 40,000. Not much higher, but a little bit higher. And the last one. Use front end estimation to calculate the approximate quotient. Even if you don't know what quotient is, which I hope you do, you should know quotient by now. But even if you didn't know, we've done product, we've done sum, we've done difference. The only thing missing now is division. And quotient means divide. So we have to divide. But we, how do we divide? We divide using long division. We're going to take 924.76. We're going to divide it by 33.51. Same strategy. This number here on the inside becomes 900. The number on the outside becomes 3 and then just 0. So 30. 900 divided by 30. Whatever number you put on top in long division, if you times it by this number, you need to get the number on the inside. 30 goes into 900 how many times? 30, 60, 90. It's going to be 30 times. I'm not going to count them all out, but let me show you how I figured that out. Remember I said whatever number you put on the top, if you multiply this, you should get that number on the inside. That's how division works. It's the opposite of multiplication. So how does that make sense? Well, remember what I said. You multiply these two. Multiply the first digits. You get nine. And then add two zeros. We get that. We subtract. We've got no remainders. But the answer is going to be 30. Now, is this estimate higher or lower than the actual value? Well, that's pretty simple by now. I know you're thinking, Mr. Melham, this is easy. I lowered the number on the inside. I lowered the number on the outside, so I've lowered my actual estimate. The real answer is going to be a little bit higher than 30.